Does Lamb have three-word answer to Dak interception issue? The Dallas Cowboys offense is a shell of the one that was the highest scoring unit in football last season, and there are multiple reasons why. Change in personnel, constant flags, communication errors, receivers not getting separation, and Dak Prescott's increasing turnovers have all led to a poor-looking offense through seven games. Dak has thrown multiple interceptions in his last three games, and part of that is his poor decision-making, he admitted as such, but it is also down to the receivers to help get open and give Prescott an option to throw to. For C.D. Lamb, he knows the job the receivers play in Dak's turnovers this season. He knows it, he's aware. The best thing is to correct it, Lamb said on Dak's turnovers. For us, we got to get open, create lanes, create avenues for him to throw in, and with that comes great route running and details. The Cowboys' offense has struggled to find a rhythm, and receivers aren't getting much, if any, separation. This leaves Dak to consistently make tight window throws for a completion and that's a bad way to live in the NFL. But Lamb knows a lot of the offense's missteps come down to the little details, which head coach Mike McCarthy has preached on for what feels like forever. Prescott and Lamb's connection felt like it got a jumpstart against the San Francisco 49ers, with CD having 17 targets, 13 receptions for 146 yards, and two touchdowns. The duo that fired the Cowboys to a division title and a 12-5 record last season appears to have woken up, and Lamb knows it. We found our rhythm, we caught our stride, and I was definitely getting open and getting the ball, Lamb said. I feel like it goes hand in hand, and look to continue to do that. If they've really found our rhythm, that is a magical three-word solution here. With the Atlanta Falcons up next, the Cowboys will again need Dak and CD's connection to be on point because, in reality, who else on Dallas offense scares opposing defenses? Possibly Jake Ferguson. But others must make Dak's job easier by giving him bigger windows to throw to. If they can manage that against the Falcons, then this offense, which seems to be walking with cement in its boots, might just begin to show signs of life. Is Deion Sanders a home run hire? In a review that is certain to have some Dallas Cowboys fans pining for a prime time reunion, Deion Sanders has indisputably engineered a turnaround of sorts at Colorado. At the end of the 2022 season, Colorado was 1 to 11. But now, two years and many, many, many controversies later, Colorado recently became bowl eligible, could have two of the top five picks in the coming NFL draft and is now the home of Coach Prime, earning big-time praise. Deion Sanders has been an unequivocal success. And I mean home-run success, said Fox Sports analyst Joel Klatt. There is no other way to categorize it. Klatt, who happens to have played at CU, cannot argue against charges that the approach taken by Sanders is unconventional. And maybe even divisive. But the legendary Cowboy star and Pro Football Hall of Famer has always done it his way. And here, even with a relative lack of experience as a coach, he's got himself a 6-2 team that has a mathematical chance of playing for a big 12 title, said Klatt, and it's two years removed from losing 11 games by 29 points per. Are you kidding me? Where are all of you now that think Dion is a joke? Where are all of you now that think Dion is only in it for himself? This guy can coach man, and I'm glad he's doing it at Colorado. Meanwhile, the Cowboys employ a lame duck coach in Mike McCarthy, with all signs pointing to a change in leadership in 2025. Dion himself has personally expressed to Cowboys country calm that he has no desire to coach in the NFL, so maybe that's that. But we bet that won't stop PR-minded Cowboys owner Jerry Jones from letting fans who desire such a thing to dream a Dion dream. Tyler Guyton is his own biggest critic, showing improvement in rookie season. It's been a roller coaster for Tyler Guyton in his first season in the NFL and with the Dallas Cowboys. As the 2024 first round pick, there was no shortage of pressure and expectations heaped onto him by a team that waved goodbye to Tyron Smith, a future first ballot Hall of Fame left tackle, needing Guyton to step in immediately and fill those shoes. It's likely none of that rivals the pressure he applies to himself. Through the first seven games, having missed one due to a knee injury, Guyton's transition to left tackle at the professional level has been a mixed bag of great showings, e.g., his week one battle against Miles Garrett, and instances he'd like to have back, including penalties. When asked what he's keying in on most heading into week nine, his answer was yes. 
I'm trying to get better at everything you know, said the highly accountable 23-year-old. To his credit, he's progressing, evident in both his numbers and in what he's putting on film most recently. A quick comparison between his production against the San Francisco 49ers, one of the best defensive fronts in the NFL, over his previous outing against the Pittsburgh Steelers, another one of the best in the league, Guyton is trending in the right direction. In his 23 snaps in Pittsburgh, he allowed three pressures on 15 pass rush snaps, 20% pressure rate, and 0.5 sacks. But in his 62 snaps against the 49ers, he allowed only three pressures on 40 pass rush snaps, 7.5% pressure rate, and zero sacks on Dak Prescott. At times, I try to focus on certain things or certain plays, but as a whole, I try to get better at everything, said Guyton. And I still have everything in the world to work on. I'm not polished up yet. I'm still working. As a reminder, Guyton also missed time in training camp and the preseason, an illness stealing much needed reps. It's also key to note that Guyton committed only one penalty against the 49ers, a holding call that was declined. His lone penalty against the Steelers was a false start. Guyton took no time off from pre-draft preparation through the start of his first official training camp, and he still hasn't, continuing to work with the famed offensive line guru Duke Manyweather with OL masterminds in Frisco between Cowboys practices. Again, there is no shortage of pressure applied to Guyton by the situation itself. But it's the pressure he puts on himself, the type that comes from inside of his own mind that fuels him toward hoping to be legendary for the team he grew up as a rabid fan of, that keeps him locked in on taking steps. And, for a rookie first-round pick, it's all about how many steps can be taken forward quickly. If you want to be great, you gotta be harder on yourself, said Guyton. You gotta be your biggest critic. You gotta want it more than anybody else wants it for you. Trayvon Diggs' run on his second Cowboys contract has not gone especially well. The former All-Pro cornerback entered this season after an extensive rehab effort, one stemming from an ACL tear suffered during an early season practice last year. Diggs now looks likely to miss more time. The fifth-year player has not practiced this week, and Jerry Jones said during his latest 105.3 The Fan appearance via The Athletics' John Machota that a calf tear is behind the absence. While it appears Diggs will not play against the Falcons on Sunday, Jones' news drop comes after the highly paid cover man played 99% of the Cowboys' defensive snaps in Week 8. Diggs returned from his ACL rehab during training camp.